car and maybe a new home or a relationship or alcohol or drugs. And there's nothing wrong with wanting that house or that car. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm trying to say is that that is just an extension of our reflection of our love and our divinity that resides within each and every one of us. And that's an extension. So when we have that house, that house does not identify who we are. Maybe music that inspires you. Because if we are waking up in the world of effect and going to our cell phones to check our Facebook or going to our computers to check our email or watching the news, what we're doing, we're going to be at, in the effect of the world and we're going, to, we're going to be functioning in the worldly realm instead of starting in from within, from a peace, from a grounded space. And how do we do that with prayer? Because the newspaper is not, reading the newspaper is not going to give us a closer relationship with God, right? <laughs> Checking their Facebook is not going to give you a closer relationship with God. So it's important to cultivate it in the morning. What I do is I say, God, let me be who you would have me be. Let me go where you would have me go. Let me say what you would have me say. Let me shine my light. How can I serve you, God? And at night, the same thing, God, I'm so grateful. And it's important to be grateful. It's as part of our spiritual practices to be grateful. And I'm truly grateful because there's no coincidence that um, we have a, I have this book of Illuminati and it's about prayer because I'm very grateful to somebody in my life that has cultivated prayer and um, spirit and God into my life since I was little. Um, some of you know my story, some of you don't. My, my dad passed away when I was three months old and my mother uh, didn't find you know, her, her mate, my father, which she's my stepfather, but I considered him my father when I was four years old. And there was a person in my life that taught me how to pray. Taught me the Our Father who art in heaven. Taught me there was a God. And how to put a little candle. And how to pray to saints. And just cultivated the spiritual spirituality in me. And what I would have feel would take me to church and show me the saints and show me what what you know which saint was what. And I really appreciate that because because of those teachings, I am here today. Because of that person influencing me, I'm here today. And I want to thank him, my brother, his name's been Show me so much love, and I feel part of our spiritual practice is being grateful, being grateful to those people in our lives that, that give us so much love, that our stand for our higher greatness is, is very important. There's this beautiful um, quote from Illuminata that says, There's nowhere to, you need to find God, for God is within you. And there's no, I mean, and there's no, there's no one you need to ask if you are good enough, for He has already established, He is. Exceedingly pleased. I love that. He is exceedingly pleased. We just forget. We just forget that we are God's perfect child. And what we do is with our spiritual practice, when we have a foundation, it's less likely we're going to fall off the wagon, you say? Fall off, you know, fall off the wagon. Because you have a spiritual core of forgiveness practice, of being responsible, of uh, prayer work, of meditation. So, that day where you're feeling kind of off, how many of you feel like some days are feeling so on, they're on fire, and some days they're just like super down? That's most of us in here, right? I have to say and, and, and that ever since I started my spiritual practice and ever since I've had the opportunity to start the Spanish congregation here at Unity, my days are not as up and down. My days are more kind of flow. I'm not saying I don't get upset. I'm not saying I don't sometimes want to, be, you know, pull my hair out. But in truth, I I go to my tool writing immediately. For instance, if I'm going through any type of, of um, situation with someone, of which or some maybe some something's going on in my life that I'm feeling off or fearful, and sometimes we're not we're feeling bad and we don't even know why, right? What we do is, is I surrender to the Holy Spirit immediately. The Holy Spirit that intuitive voice, you can call it whatever you want, whatever voice resonates with you. As I said, you have to find what works for you. So that voice radiates, and what I do is I say, Holy Spirit, I surrender to you this situation. I surrender to you my sadness. I surrender to you right now that I'm not feeling well. And I just surrender to the Holy Spirit. I say, Holy Spirit, let me see this another.
another way. Let me see this through your eyes. It's a, and I, I want you to be connected to your heart and be with your heart and be with yourself. And I want you to give yourself this gift right now to yourself to begin a new day. To begin a new day of being connected to that love of God that resides within each and every one of us. And as I say in each paragraph, you say it as well, aloud, and you feel it in your heart. And I would love for you to make the commitment to believe it at an extraordinary level. And this is how it goes. Dear God, thank you for this new day, its beauty, and its light. Thank you for my chance to begin again. Free me from the limitations of yesterday. Today may I be reborn. Today may I be reborn. May I become more fully a reflection of your radiance. May I be this day an instrument of the love and healing. May I be this day an instrument of the love and healing. Lead me into gentle pastures. Lead me into gentle pastures. Give me deep peace that I might serve you most deeply. Give me deep peace that I might serve you most deeply. Amen. Amen. You got so connected. That you're laughing, right? <laughs> Sometimes even laughter is so wonderful, you know, just to laugh and just to just to let go. It's amazing because when we're laughing, we're actually in oneness. We kind of forget everything. We feel that oneness with God. There's this quote from A Course in Miracles that says that the ego was created when the Son of God forgot to laugh, which is beautiful. To, to have a spiritual practice is a commitment, is a dedication. Saying, you know what, I am going to dedicate myself to my spiritual practice. And that takes dedication and that also takes um, patience with yourself to be accepting of where you are. And when it comes to prayer, there's different types of ways to pray. Well, one, prayer, one way to pray is to be in silence. You can go to your room, you can put your candle, your incense, and that's a great way of ceremony to pray. You could do it maybe once, a minute or two, five minutes, or how long you want. But then there's this other type of prayer, which I've been doing, um, that Illuminata has inspired me to do, and I'm doing a lot more, which is praying all the time. So I'll pray when I'm driving. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day, look beautiful weather. Um, if somebody cuts me off, I'm like, bless you, man, bless you. You know, I'm like, and uh, if somebody cuts me off, um, if, 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 I'm, if I'm in the in line, bothering me or in my space, you know, we just get irritated about the littlest things, and we don't realize that at that, that moment, we have the opportunity to be to come from fear or love, so I just bless that person, bless you, and then it just goes away, because everything is just a reflection of my thought system, so whatever is going on out there that I'm experiencing, I know i got to work on something in here, it always goes back to going with it, to going with it, to going with it, so I pray when I'm washing my dishes, I put on my gloves, I start washing, I thank you God for the opportunity to, to be today speaking. Congregation. Thank you for the Spanish ministry I have. And I'm just grateful for all my blessings. So I I I cheer you guys on to take that on and know that you can pray at any point because sometimes we feel we could only pray here when we come on Sundays, when we go to church, we feel that we could only pray before we go to bed. But it's important to cultivate a prayer practice all through the day, every minute of the day. Why? Because the ego thought system, and of course miracle says this, the ego speaks first and speaks the loudest. So that's even and that's why I say to wake up in the morning and start a spiritual practice so that you can be more aligned. And I'm not saying you're not going to maybe fall off a wagon during the day, even if you did your prayer work in the morning. But you know what? It's easier for you to get back up. It's going to be easier to get, to get connected with God again. So having an extraordinary issue with God is a decision. It's a decision to forgive. This is a big one. Forgiveness. How many people feel that they have to forgive people in their lives? And they, they hold that, that in. And of course, the miracles talks about forgiveness in a way of being responsible, of, of owning it, and saying, God, I forgive myself for creating this situation.
situation for creating what I'm seeing out there, and I forgive that person for what in reality they didn't do. And then I surrender to the Holy, Holy Spirit said, Holy Spirit, I surrender this to you, let me see it another way, and I pray for a miracle. Now you're gonna say, Maria, well, hold on a second. Why am I forgiving this person? This person didn't do this to me. Yes, they did it to you in the material realm. But I'm talking about the realm of God and oneness, that in reality, in true reality, that person was in wrong mindedness. It didn't really occur in the mind of God. So that's where you stand, and that's what true forgiveness is. It's not, oh, I forgive you. And then the next day, you know, you're talking about that person. You're <laughs> talking about praying for kids, right? And you talk to them about this willingness. The Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit, um, the Course of Miracles talks about willingness throughout the whole book. Willingness. All you need is willingness. Willingness is a power that is beyond of just saying I'm positive or I can do this. It's a power that comes from so deep inside that you're so open to the love of God and so open to changing your life. And even if you have an extraordinary life, even making it even better, that there's just this, like you're just willing. And when you're willing, miracles happen. I know because I'm living it. There are situations to God. What we're doing is we're being trusting. We're saying we're aligning, we're, we're aligning to the thought system of God. But not only that, we're asking God for, for His will to be done. Now, prayer is very important because a lot of people have the misconception that praying is duplication, right? What about all the else? Hey, please go to your boyfriend. <laughs> or, please, God, give me that first baby seal okay, convertible. <laughs> what I do is a different kind of prayer practice, which I'm going to share with you today. It's actually the song of prayer, which is an extension of the Course in Miracles, and the prayer comes from a place of letting God's will be done. Letting God's will be done. So the first step is you decide what is it that you want, whatever it is you want. And the second step is to be and feel worthy of whatever you want. Because sometimes we want something and it's in misalignment, it's not in alignment with our truth. It's like we want something but we're being different. So it's really being aligned to that if you want these babies, if you want abundance, have a consciousness of abundance even if you're not seeing it in your realm. So it's about being aligned. It's, we're really hard on ourselves. We are extremely hard on ourselves. Makes us, I don't think, I know that we're, we're, we're enemies. You know, and it's okay that we fall down and we make mistakes. And it's okay that maybe we didn't maybe appreciate a job offer, maybe we didn't, we didn't do the best thing we, we could have done in a certain situation. But you know what? We're doing the best we can. Spiritual practice. And the spiritual practice is praying, is meditating, is forgiving. It's um, having the communication with God, it's surrendering every single moment, whatever's going on in your life. And most important, always it starts with an inside every circumstance, invite God to every circumstance. That's just a basic one. Invite God to everything. The next one is ask God to take away any thoughts that are not of Him. So anytime you're thinking something, and you know when you're thinking stuff that's not good because you're not feeling good. It's very simple. When you're not, when you're feeling off, that's your gauge to know that you're in the ego thought system, that you're in a thought system that's not aligned to God, and you're off. The next one is ask God that His will be manifested. And that's actually the third step of the prayer, which is God, let your will be done. And then the last one is be honest and be humble. Be honest and be humble through your spiritual practice. So I invite you to start a spiritual practice and I invite you to, to pray and I invite you to make up your own prayers. Prayers that resonate with your heart. I, I, my favorite one is God, I mean, be as it would have me be, but I also do other ones that just resonate with me and my heart and write them down. It's very simple. But I encourage you, just because of the trans transformation that I have had in my life, there's so much abundance and so much love around me. And I just feel that love within me right now, just because of my spiritual practice. I just, I, I really um, I want to inspire every one of you to start a spiritual practice because it feels so good. And you live in so much more peace.